Hello and welcome to a bite-sized ad video. In this one, this is going to be kind of a follow-up to our first pass solution video. This can be what we call maybe a second pass solution or a slightly better solution to uh, non-good pairs. So I'll share my screen then we'll talk a little bit about this. So previously we've done our good pairs quadratic equation where we've done a brute force first pass solution. So I want to kind of think about the other options here let's let's move this kind of off screen out of the way for a minute and i'll kind of do stuff here and talk about some stuff so let's think about this second example where everything's the same this kind of makes me feel that there's a pattern here where we can probably leverage from this because just to solve just this specific thing in isolation we could use a little bit of mathematics but let, let's um, let's do a screen grab of that sort of thing. Let's grab that. That's the old one. Let's grab the new one. Just this next example. I want to have a look at this example. So let's copy this. <clears throat> let's pop it on a whiteboard. And let's start looking at this in isolation just as a tester. So let's think. We've got these numbers. We've got an output, an expected output of six. So we've got a number to start with, six. Okay, now what do we need to do to figure out how we came to this portion? How did, how did we come to six? So initially, let's think of the brute force. We tried that one, which then goes one, two, three. So we've got three solutions there. Then we try the next one, which gives us one, two. So it's another two. Then we try this one, which gives us another one. And then we add all these up and then we end up with this whole six. Which, which brings us to six. That's great. We've got, that's the way we're doing it at the moment with a brute force. But how can we perhaps reverse this six to be a bunch of pairs? So let's say our result, I'll just call, call six our res for result or something. So this is our res. So we take our res six. Now we're using pairs, so we could divide it into chunks of two. Yeah, so so we can say, okay, what's six and it's, it's pairs, so I'll, I'll multiply it by two because it's pairs that I'm dealing with, yeah? So what's six times two gives me a 12. Now the relationship between this, what else, have, what else do we know? We could say the length of nums, we could call N. So basically what's the, so N in this case is four. So we'll say N is four. So if I take N, so if I take this number here now, so res times two, if I take that and divide it by N, what, do, what, what result do I get? What, what do I get back? So let's look, 12 divided by n, and n in this case is four. So 12 divided by four will give me a three. Okay, cool. That doesn't really, hmm. Now, to find a pattern, we need more inputs of the same sort of thing. So, so I could say instead of four, let's make it five and try and do the same equation and see what patterns come out of this, okay? And see how, how we can observe what this is doing. So let's start again, we've got one, two, three, four. So we've got four, we've got one, two, three, we've got a three, and we've got a one, two, we've got a two, and we've got a one. So that's doing the brute force. So four plus six, there's 10. So, so this has 10 combinations, yeah? We got there via the brute force. Now let's reverse this back again. So, so, so now res instead of being six. So instead of six, now res is 10. So now I'll go 10 times two gives me 20. Now if I divide it by the size or the length of thing, so if I say n is the length of noms and there's the length of noms at the moment, which is what? Five, so I divide it by five, gives me what? 20 divided by five gives me a four, right? So we've now got another number, four. In relationship to 
um, our length of things here. So that, that was a four, wasn't it? In relationship to our length, what is this? In both instances, do we see a pattern? So if n is four, then this sentinel number, I'll call it Sn, is going to be equal to three. And if n is five, then our sentinel number is gonna be four. So, so, so far I can see a slight pattern. We could do a few more tests, but in general, I'm going to go with a guess that if the length is five, then my other value is gonna be four. So based on this, I can actually reverse what I've done into some form of mathematical equation. Because at the moment, let's just make this into a math equation based on having a res, a n, um, and a sn, and pairs being two. So we'll have a constant of two. So what we'll say is the result times two. Okay, so that's what we'll do first, don't we? And that will output whatever that is. And then divided by n. So we've now got this kind of thing. We'll output our sentinel number. Okay, let's bring that up a little bit. Output our sentinel number. Yeah? So we know what this is. This is going to be a constant. N is going to be the length of any given things. The result is going to be the end result. So if we want to reverse this and say, well, how do we find out the result based on this equation? If we know that result times two divided by N is going to equal a sentinel number, doesn't that mean that our sentinel number times N and then we're taking this two and putting that on the other side. So divided by two is equal to res. Can't we then kind of reverse this in that way? Think about it this way. We've took our times two. It's moved sides from the equation. So it's moved over here. If it moves over to a different side of the equal sign, what actually happens is you have to change the thing. So if it's multiply, it turns into divide. If it's plus, it turns into minus. If it's minus, it turns into plus and so on. So we've changed that to a divide two to be on this side. And we've, instead of getting our sentinel number with a division, we're literally doing a multiply of our sentinel number plus our, uh, and our number divided by two to get back to our result. And let's see if that works. Let's try that. So if we know that our sentinel number is gonna be the size or N minus one so far, we can say, okay, what I want to do is I'll take my sentinel number of um, three, times it by the size of my array, which was four. That will give me the 12, and then divide that 12 by two, giving me the six. So that works. That gets us the six. So now if I do it for this one, and I say, okay, well, first I'll take my sentinel number, which is a four, times it by the n, which is the length of the thing, times five, which will give us a 20. Then take that 20 and divide it by two, which will give us a 10, which works, it gives us a result. So that if we know that we have all the same number, so if we know we have a count, we can count up how many of the same number we have. So, so how many repeated of this? So that's in isolation, that solves that, just in pure maths. So we now know that n is the length of the array. Our sentinel number is actually n minus one. Okay. 
so we can do basically the equivalent to n minus 1 times n divided by 2 should be the result for any possible permutation of a list of like numbers, so pairs. So the 2 is because it's pairs. Okay. So now we have like distilled a base algorithm to start off with. Okay. So, so let's keep that base algorithm to one side and think about things. So in essence, how can we leverage this to solve other things? Because at the moment we can just solve for this specific one. I can just say, output that. Technically to solve just for this input, you could turn like this into like just, uh, let's, look, let's say return. Let's, let's try and whittle this down. So I need my thing I'll push it there. N minus one times N. Uh, yeah, N minus one times N divided by two. So N minus one. So N is len of nums. Yeah. Minus one. So that's, that's our first portion. So that's our sentinel number. Then what we want to do is times our length of nums, yeah? And then divide that by two. And that will give us, if they're all exactly the same number, that will give us how many pairs, how many good pairs. How taps that? It's like, you know, it's... So obviously that will only work for like, uh, for literally for this, yeah? So we could test that out, we could test our theory out make sure it still works for any ones that are exactly the same okay again this isn't a full solution to the whole thing yet this is just me working out possibilities of a solution so what i'm going to do is i'm going to like get rid of that for a second and i'm just going to have it return this it won't work for this one or it shouldn't work for this one anyway look we'll go like this this will give us completely the wrong thing i don't do any of that i'm gonna do Python, number good pairs. Oh look, 15, that's not correct, is it? <laughs> In the slides for this one. But that's fine, because I'm not trying to solve this one right now. What I want to do is test it against our original one, or our original other one that I want to work out. One, two, three, four. And that should equal six, right? Let's see if it works for that, just out of interest. That's not right. Oh, no, of course you're not right. I'm not doing them good pairs. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Get that out of the way. Let's go do that. There we go. Would help for I was actually doing the correct thing. So we've got six. How cool is that? It's, it's doing correctly for this one item. And remember what we said? If we add one more, it should be 10. Let's save that. And give it a go. And it's 10. So it's given us the correct answer for that isolated incident. Now that doesn't solve the whole lot, but it does mean that if we can somehow separate all of these numbers into their, like just make that a list of ones, a list of twos, a list of threes, and then run that on each of those lists, we should be able to increment our uh, good pairs by that amount and keep adding up until we eventually get the whole answer. So it's like we're breaking down the problem, which also means that we don't have to do quadratic. We can do still two for loops, but we can kind of do it in a way where it's not nested. We can just build up some sort of frequency table, then utilize that frequency table to kind of figure out like literally which ones of these are, are, and turn them into actual singular lists almost okay i'm hoping that makes sense because that obviously there's a lot more to it at the moment i've just managed to whittle through and break down that one thing okay so that that's the starting point. So I've got a starting point. I'm gonna I'm gonna get that out of the way for the moment.
So we've, we've got an idea of what that is. Now we need to build up our actual set of frequencies and stuff like that. So I want basically to have another look at the question just to make sure we're on the same page. Let's have a look. So we know it's going to have a maximum of a hundred items. So it's, we're going to want to go from one to 100. So in essence, if we had a list, we'd want 101 items in a list would give us the indices from one to 100, ignoring the zeros. Okay. So we could utilize that or we could do, use a dictionary, whichever you prefer. But the idea what I'm thinking is I'll use a dictionary or well, not a dictionary. I'm going to, I'm going to use a list for now. So let's think about this. If I could use a list or an array of a bunch of zeros, yeah? So frequencies. Maybe a frequency list where the frequency list size, yeah, is 101 because we want to start from one when we, when we have these numbers, we're not bothered by zero because the, the constraints are letting it know that it's going to be greater than or equal to one. So we're never going to be using zero. So we can't just make something made of 100 in length because it would include zero as its index. So we need to index from one for our frequency thing. So we want 101 items in there. And we can have the indices be the actual number. And then the content of that thing at that indices be the amount or the frequency of those numbers. So imagine we had uh, our original thing where we had a bunch of ones. Imagine we have a list of ones. We could do a count and see how many ones are in there. So then the frequency at one by eyeballing it would be four. Okay. So now we have like the number of that number. So, so we can check how many ones we have. We have four. So now we've isolated that. Then if there were any twos, equals however many twos there were in there. So it's as if we're splitting it out into these separate things. So if I had like one, two, one, one, two, one, for instance, this could be split out into the logically as if it was a bunch of ones and two twos. And we can split that out by, by having the frequency. So if we read through this one based on updating frequencies, our two would actually equal two there. There's a frequency of two. Yeah. So then if we ran our algorithm on each of these lists or each of these logical amounts, using that sort of same algorithm of N is the length of this. So there's, there's four in this one. Yeah. And n is the length of this one, there's two in this one. So in that situation, n is two. And in this situation, n is four. So if I were to turn around and use my n minus one, so three times four divided by two would be the, the answer to this, which would be six. And then uh, one times two divided by two would actually be equal to one, which would be the answer for that. Then you add these two together to give us seven and then the seven good pairs in this. So that's how we, we could like utilize a frequency table to build out how many of each of these there are and how many of each of these there are to break down the problem into smaller pieces and then add them up at the end to give us the answer. Okay. This has been quite math heavy and sort of, jumping around a lot, but I hope that you followed through with what I've been talking about. If not, remember to perhaps put the video on, um, I don't know, 0 0.5 times and work through it slowly and pause when you need to.
But based on this, that means I just need a frequency table of size 101. I need to fill it with the frequencies of each of the numbers. Okay. So all of that could be done in one sort of loop to start with. Because no cell said the first one. How many ones are there? Well, there's four. How many twos are there? Well, there's two. And, I mean, and just keep doing that through an entire loop. Then what I can do is have another loop checking the good pairs, but not a nested one, just one afterwards. So I could then utilize that uh, same algorithm to do like we just did in this. So I drew it out. That's what the algorithm will be doing. And then eventually it'll just increment whatever that answer is with that answer and just keep doing that. So you start, imagine you had num, uh, let's just say good pairs again. equal to zero, we go through all of these frequencies and go, okay, well, now we've got the frequencies. Now, what we'll do is we'll run our algorithm on those frequencies, as you can see there, which will spit out a six. So we can just go our good pairs. So ink our good pairs by the algorithm. Yeah. So by N minus one times N divided by two. So that's what I'm going to increment it by. Yeah. And just keep doing that for every single one of these frequencies until eventually we've incremented all of the good pairs. And then we can just return that good pairs. Okay. I'm hoping that's starting to make sense. If it doesn't look, if it doesn't make sense straight away, watch over a couple of times and get a feel for it and just have a play with the idea of it and try a few different ones of your own. Just write out sort of like these things here. Okay, so let, let's actually write that out then as a, as a concept, okay? Again, I don't want to actually return that right this second. But I now have my algorithm there, if you know what I mean. That's, that's there ready to do stuff, okay? Right. So what I want to think about is... Again, I still want to keep track. So keep track of good pairs. So that stays the same. Now I want to keep track of frequencies. Oops. Keep track of frequencies of all numbers between 1 and 100. Okay, so I want to create kind of this frequency map or this frequency table or whatever you want to call it. Okay, then I want to iterate over all of the numbers. So iterate over all nums. Okay, and while I'm iterating over that, I want to increment. my frequencies i'll call it frequency table for now or frequency list yeah whatever frequency list by uh no at the index of nums of i okay yeah so i'm gonna like add one to it every time until we eventually hit all of that stuff. So if uh, nums of i is a one, then I'm gonna use that as the index into frequencies and say, okay, we'll add one to that. If another nums of i is a one, then that means we're adding another one to it. So we keep adding to that to build up how many ones there are in the list. If it's twos, it'll be doing it to the two. If it's threes and so on, it'll be doing it to that one. Okay. So, that being said, that's kind of an entire iteration. You've finished with that. Now what I want to do is separately, not, not nested, I want to do another iteration over a range of like 101 numbers because remember we said about the whole 101 thing. So now I want to iterate over uh, indices 1 to 100 of frequencies 
or frequency list or something. Yeah. So we'll iterate over that. And then we want to check if my frequencies or frequency list at the index of i is greater than one. Because if it's if it's equal to one or less than one, then then there are none of it, so it's, it doesn't matter. But if it's greater than one, then there's at least a pair. And if there's only one pair in the list, we know it's a good pair. So we'll check that. And if it is, if this is true, then increment the good pairs by our algorithm or the result like by the result of the algorithm what do we call it it was um, n minus what was it n minus 1 times n divided by 2 probably floor divide to make sure there's no but it should be fine. So this would probably be done first. We shouldn't need anything there. Yeah, by that algorithm. Okay. Okay, such that n, so such that n is the length of numbers or nums. Well, that's it, such that n is the length of the numbers okay so so that should be the sort of algorithm that we want to adhere to yeah so let, let's try and write that up in some code in a moment but just take a moment to think about this look at what we've actually achieved we've we've kind of went over this simple math well maybe not so simple as lots of writing all over the place but we've We've distilled an algorithm from this simple input and output. All we had really is an output and an input. And we've worked through the flow of how it possibly could be, distilled some form of mathematics, then changed the input and output and tested it against a similar pattern or a similar set to see whether there's a pattern. And we found a pattern, created an algorithm, then reversed that algorithm to be able to get back to some sort of a solution. Yeah, so we reversed it and turned it into this. Then we tested the idea by logically moving through this thing, utilizing a frequency table, creating these two sets of frequencies and then running it through our algorithm to see whether it actually did the six and the one like it did there. And then add those two together, which gave us the fact that we want to increment them to give us a correct answer, to show that for us, we have our proofs. So we've got a hypothesis, a distillation of uh, algorithm, and then some proofs. Uh, you, you're welcome to make more proofs if you like when you're doing these sort of things. And I, I do um, think that I'd condone trying a few different inputs and outputs and make sure that it's definitely correct before you move forward, but for, for time constraints and not to go make this into a massively long video. I didn't want to do too many inputs. And then write out in your own words, what you want the program to do step by step, sort of not necessarily pseudo but just general words of the steps, what you think it should take to give you and distill a full algorithm for the solution. So, now we can kind of code it up. I mean, like I said, once we've got this done to this point, the code is almost irrelevant. It's just like, it, it almost writes itself. So we know we want to keep track of good pairs. We also want some frequency table. So frequency equals a list. But I know what size I want the list. So remember in uh, Python, I don't know if it's a normal thing, for you to know this, but that will make uh, a list, an empty list of 101, but we want it to start at zero because it's gonna be like a counter, isn't it? So now we've just got 101 zeros in a list, okay? So I've just created a list. 
Now that we've got those two things done, we keep track, keep track of good pairs and keep track of frequencies of all the numbers between one and 100. The 101 is just because the size needs to be one larger to allow the index to be 100. Because we'll be starting from index of one, not index of zero, which is how lists start. Okay. So now what we can do is we can, we can go over, loop over all of the, so iterate over all nums. So for i in range of the length of nums, that's just iterating over all the numbers. Now what I want to do is I want to take my frequency and at the index of nums at i. Yeah? And then I want to increment it by one. So that's just counting up all the frequencies of each of these numbers in the nums. That's all. And that, that's the entirety of that one thing. Now we need to increment, oh, sorry, not increment, we need to iterate now over the num indices between one and 100. And to do that, we can just do another for loop. This time, range of 101. Okay. Now we want to check, notice that, check if the frequency list at the index of i is greater than one. So if frequency list at index of i is greater than one, if that's true, yeah, then increment the good pairs by this, this algorithm. So I already wrote out what this algorithm would look like in code. So here's what it looks like in code. So let's take that portion of it. And I want to increment my good pairs by that. So literally, if I say good pairs plus equals our algorithm. Uh, and I wanted to floor divide just in case it gives us like a point something, because I'm pretty sure it wants whole numbers. It, it wants integers, doesn't it? It doesn't want um, floating point numbers. So that being said, once that for loop's finished, that's, that's all of the looping done. So that's that. I forgot to actually add the fact that we do want to return, uh, sorry, once all loops are done, return good pairs to the caller. Might help if we remember to return. <laughs> that, that's probably a good idea. Forgot about that. You know, the return good pairs portion like that. So, Right, so yeah, I must remember to return stuff, otherwise it, it, the caller doesn't know what's going on. So return good pairs. Okay, so in essence, look how, look how simple that looks. It's like, oh, well, why didn't we just do that in the first place? Well, the reason is we needed to work out how it was formulated, what would work and what wouldn't, and kind of distill an algorithm in math first, and then distill our algorithm to how we were going to implement that from the mathematics. Okay. So again, if there's any questions, do feel free to drop a comment in, a, in there. That's cool. Uh, if there's any, if you liked it, remember to hit the like and subscribe if you want to see more stuff. So what I'm going to do before we finish up, I don't even know how long this has gone on for. Before we finish up, I'm going to grab where is my num good pairs? I've lost it. I'll put it over here, didn't I? <laughs> Let's go and take my second pass solution. I'll paste my second pass solution in. I've just wrote. Let's move this back here. So we can do some testing. Let's grab all of this and shift divide, isn't it? Right, so now we've got our new version. I've commented out our old version, and let's see what happens. See if I've broke anything or whether it just works. So we know it should, like the number good pairs was working anyway when we just returned for this one. So let's see if it's still working. 10, that's correct. Let's see if it equals six. I'm gonna do this. Okay, but we already had it doing that by just returning the this, literally. What happens when we try and do the one that wasn't working? Okay, we're expecting a four and a six, aren't we? Well, we got a 30, there's a broken bit here. What's going on here? There's a problem, okay? So the question is, what's wrong? We're missing something here. It's a broken piece. So 
where's our broken piece? Okay. Right, so there's a problem here because I've just copied and pasted this. So, so what's wrong? Look at this line and tell me what's wrong. So I've took the length of nums minus one. That's not what I wanted, is it? That's what I want if I want to hard code it. So what's wrong here? Let's take a look at our thing here and revisit because we've just got some broken stuff. I know exactly what's wrong, but I just want to iterate over some things that could go wrong. So instead of just utilizing this, that's great. But remember that in our drawing, that's not what happened. It wasn't the length of nums because nums is here. What is it the length of? Look at this. Pause the video and try and figure it out. Our logic is correct in this drawing. It went away just in the code. Just keep an eye on it. Think about it. I was going to leave this as homework, but I thought I'll give you the answer in a second. So in essence, what we did was we, we've utilized nums, but nums isn't the correct part here because we're using frequencies. So what do we need to change here to make this work? Think about that. So frequencies are I is what we're using. So it's not nums. It's this is returning us a number. So this is what we actually want. So what we, instead of len, of nums, what we really want is frequency at i. Yeah. So instead of such that n is the len of nums, the wording needs to change based on this drawing. So such that n is the frequency list. I. Okay. This is what copy and paste gets you if you're not careful. <laughs> so who came up with that? Who, who kind of paused the video and sort of like went, hey, uh, you needed to do this. I'm hoping a few people did because that's something that needs to be, you need to be mindful of. So if I change this portion right here to be an FREQ at I following the amendments and then same again, following the FREQ at I. Now, when we look at it, we have a more closer solution to this, what we did here. Okay. So let, let's just change that one line in our, test and see whether it fixes what we need it to do. And like I say, I'm not going to, I don't want to kind of spoil it. So I just want to run through. So let's, let's change this line here. Oops. Let's not click random stuff. Let's change this line here. Not wood pairs. Let's do good pairs instead. <laughs> so with this change, what, what do you think is going to happen before I run this? Is it going to work or is it not? Pause the pause it and think. Write down whether you think it's going to work or not. Okay. Okay. If you're back, that's awesome. Let's save this. Make sure it's fully saved and let's test it again. See if we still end up with a thirty. Oh look, we happen to get exactly the correct answer. So you've got to be mindful of the changes that you make and the naming conventions you use and the flow of your program. Understanding the flow of the program makes a big difference. See, if you miss out the fact that we had to change the algorithm a little bit, because we're not, we're doing a non-destructive algorithm here. We're not changing any of this data here. All we're doing is we're creating a frequency table to hold how long it would be if we logically had tables of these types. Notice say this is seven. So we could test this one. This should output seven based upon what we've talked about. So one, two, one, one, two, one. Let's try that. So we're looking for one, two, one, one, two, one. Yeah. 
So let, let's literally do this. We should end up with a seven, right? So that should be a seven once we change the data. So do this as a test. Change that data out. Again, you should write more robust tests than this. This is just like really basic, but, oh look, we have a seven. So we now have a final working second pass solution. After going through debugging and looking through, and when I say debugging, looking at our pictures and how we actually allowed the flow instead of just blindly following this algorithm, it's just applying this algorithm required changes to the code. That's all. So the final code will be up on um, GitHub for you to uh, grab. I'll put a link in the uh, description with the commit and the repo. I hope that was enjoyable. It was quite a rigmarole and a, a long one. I'm hoping it didn't go over an hour or so. Um, but for me, it was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you again in another video.